Hello and welcome to Arts View, where you'll get your insider peek into what's happening in the arts at Salem State College. The Center for Creative and Performing Arts produces over 100 events a year in theater, dance, music, art, and creative writing. These events are often free and always affordable, available to students and the community. So what's on board for October? We've got something frightening on display in the Winfiski Gallery. We also have a literary classic for the stage and music that's been heard in outer space. The Winfiski Gallery gets a little spooky this October, just in time for Halloween in Salem. We've got our very own drawing professor Haig de Margin's exhibit, Eerie Horrors from Beneath the Vault of Dread. I had a chance to meet with Haig in his artist studio in Gloucester. Take a look. I'm surrounded by monsters in Haig de Margin's studio in Gloucester. Haig? Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for coming, Kathleen. Into the evil lair. Oh, very few make it this far. <laughs> uh, so this is an exhibit full of monsters. Is that all you paint? Is there anything else you, you draw? Um, I paint all sorts of different things, but they usually turn out somewhat monstrous. Monsters, ghouls, ghosts. Yeah, vampires, fishmen, giant squid, werewolves, <laughs> you name it. I, th I think they're pretty pretty much all in there. So this is work that belongs in Salem in October. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I love it. The witch city. Last year you did a drawing marathon. I did. What the heck is a drawing marathon? It was an exhibit called uh, The Curse of the Haunted Tower. And um, it's this great space up in Portland, Maine called the Map Room. This Map Room is located in what used to be a 19th century electrical tower a three-story electrical tower. And um, I decided to lock myself in there for 25 hours and draw nothing but monsters. You know, and we'll see some of those paintings. There will be selections from that in, Excellent. Uh, in the show that uh, is coming up in the Winfiski Gallery. The show is entitled... Eerie Horrors from Beneath the Vault of Dread. I love all this horror imagery, but um, I keep coming back to what's life without a sense of humor. And uh, I'm not trying to show you dark and terrible truths that will that will um, unseat you and, and, and make you afraid to turn out the lights because that's kind of passe. So this isn't yeah. grotesque? Um, yes, no. Well, it is. It is, there's grotesquerie. I mean, there's, there's right. uh, uh, distortions and, and deformations and uh, 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 trying to combine images and information in ways that you haven't seen. And uh, to surprise yourself, I don't need to surprise myself in my artwork and uh, surprise the viewer hopefully a little bit and Excellent. they have a good time. It's entertainment, right? One last question. Yes. Nightmares? Yes or no? Do you have them? I love them. Don't have them anymore though. <laughs> Aww. Love nightmares, don't have them. I think all the nightmares happen for me in the studio. <laughs> right here. You know, right here. So there's no need for me to have nightmares. Thanks for having me to your studio. Thanks for coming, Kathleen. And I look forward to seeing you and these gentlemen and you at the Winfisky Gallery in October. A door slam heard around the world. That's what George Bernard Shaw called the finale of A Doll's House, and it's what the theater department will be producing on stage this October, directed by Professor Bill Cunningham. Take a look, see what Bill Cunningham told me about his version of A Doll's House. I'm in the Callan Studio Theater, the 90-seat black box theater in the basement of Sullivan Building, and I'm here with the theater professor, chair of the department, and uh, the director of Doll's House, Bill Cunningham. Hey, Bill. Hi, Catherine. Great to have you here. It's nice to be here. So we're doing Doll's House starting in October, and mm -hmm. you're our director. Um, tell me about this play. I know it's a classic. I know that English majors, theater majors across the country, high school students read this play. It's considered a giant. Well, as a, from a playwright perspective, it's a perfectly written play. Um, so it's, it's structured perfectly. Uh, uh, Ibsen is, in, in most intro classes, you could say he's the father of realism. So there's a whole style of theater around him. Um, so there's all these academic reasons to study the play and to learn from it. And tell me quickly uh, about the plot of Doll's House. 
Um, the plot of A Doll's House is we have a woman, Nora Helmer, who, um, in order to save her husband's life, mm -hmm. um, was told by the doctors that she had to take him to the uh, southern climate. Um, and to do that, she had to borrow money. Okay. But a woman in that time period wouldn't be allowed to borrow money. This is the turn of the 20th century. Right. Sure. And she had to forge a signature to get her to save her husband's life. Um, and she's hidden this from her husband. Uh-oh. These are funny people. These are human people. Um, these are challenging people. Right. It's what makes theater exciting. Oh, I'm so looking forward to this production, Bill. Thank you. Excellent. I'm looking forward to doing it. Thank Thanks you so much. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Excellent. Bill Cunningham, chair of the theater department. Imagine a Japanese folk tune with surf guitar thrown in. Maybe a little bit of the classic Ghost Riders theme, and then throw in some Bach lute suites. What you've got is the California Guitar Trio's original sound. This virtuoso trio has performed on the Grammys. You've heard their music on CNN, ESPN, on the Olympics, and all the major networks. Now, California Guitar Trio will perform for one night in the recital hall on Central Campus. Here's a sample. All month long, there's plenty of events to choose from. Start a Monday morning with the Marjorie Morgan Performance Group's free dance performance, or beloved music professor Phil Swanson.